Welcome to Ceramic Bead Making with Earth Nocturne. In this video, we will be glaze firing the set of beads shown here that we have hand formed and bisque fired in previous videos. Here are the tools we'll be using. If you have a Dremel tool or a flex shaft available, you can use that in place of the bead reamer that I'm using. I'm going to be using a manual bead reamer as it is pretty low cost and I have a heavy gauge wire and I'll use the cantle wire to dislodge large chunks of the glaze that are caught in the hole and then use the bead reamer to take out any of the remaining glaze. I use a flexible type sandpaper. It's easy to get into crevices with and lasts a long time. And I use the sandpaper to even out the glaze, especially in spots where the hemostat was used to dip. Use a duster brush outside or someplace well ventilated to take off any glaze or bisque dust. This is cantle wire in 14 gauge. This is what I will be using to hang the beads in the kiln during the firing. I also have 16 and 18 gauge wire, which I use for very light beads as it tends to bend if it has a, a heavier bead on it. Now I'm cutting these to about three inches for my needs. You may need them longer or shorter, depending on the space between posts you'll be using. This is what can happen when the threading holes are made too small in the forming stage. I had to use too small of a wire and it bent during the firing. The beads stuck to the shelf. So make sure you make your holes large enough when you're forming that they can support the weight. And this is what happens when I put too large of a wire in too small of a hole. The bead sticks to the wire during the firing. I'll just use a grindstone here on my flex shaft to take off the glaze spills. You can use kiln wash to avoid having drips like that stick to your shelf. Or you can make some discs like I have here, bisque them, and lay them underneath the beads on the shelf for firing. That way it will prevent any drips from ruining your shelf. I have a variety of shelf posts on hand. These are used on the shelf to hold the wires that will be holding the beads. I load the first shelf on half inch posts so that there is good circulation throughout the kiln. During a glaze firing, the pieces will not be able to touch one another or they will stick together during the firing. I'm also going to leave uh, between one and two inches at least between the second shelf and the top of the beads on the first shelf. And on the second shelf, I'm going to be firing some long pendants that will need extra room, so I add another stack of posts. The vent is turned on at the beginning of the firing and is left on for the entire firing until it's complete. Make sure you use some type of vent if you're firing indoors. 
After approximately 12 to 24 hours, depending on the size of your kiln, it will be ready to open once it's below about 150 degrees or for best results, wait until it's cooled completely. I'm using a bead reamer to remove any glaze from the holes that's been fired in and a stilt stone to take off any sharp edges around the holes. You can also use a flex shaft for removing the glaze. I usually will wash the beads in soap and water, dry them, and use a buffer. If you have one available, these are a very nice way to finish the beads. Now that we've completed this set of beads from start to finish, they are ready to be made into jewelry. Thanks for watching. I hope that you'll join me next time here on Ceramic Bead Making with Earth Nocturne.